time for some more Kurtz Gazette. Specifically, stranded in time, your time machine broke at the worst time in history. So I guess time AAA isn't available. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. Your time machine broke. And you're stuck in the worst time in history. Oh, no. It feels like you stepped into an oven. Now, you'd think a time machine, since you can get into some really bad situations, though at least it looks like you're on a planet in this case, because you could have always ended up in a spot where the Earth isn't, but you would think you would need all kinds of redundant backup systems to make sure you don't get lost or you don't cause some sort of paradox or alter history in any weird way. You might even need more redundant systems than a nuclear power plant because the potential impact of this could be way worse. There are no plants or any vegetation and almost no moisture in the air. The sunlight smashing down from the cloudless and weirdly colored sky effect. is reflected by an endless sea of red and orange sand dunes stretching over the horizon for thousands of kilometers. Dust devils the size of buildings dance over the hellish landscape. Looks like Mars except closer to the sun, so, okay. <laughs> in the past. You're in the early Triassic, okay. hot house Earth 250 million years ago. A few million years after the worst oh, mass extinction right. in history. The yeah, I can see how this is pretty bad. <laughs> the one thing I will say about this is there's actually less background radiation. No fission products, no artificial isotopes. I guess there's slightly more uranium-238, but not by much. 250 million years ago is a long time, but when you're dealing with something that has a half-life of 5 billion years, it's really not that much more. Even that's probably a wash because the sun's earlier on in its fuel cycle. Barely. It's still not going to make a huge difference. planet is still suffering from a permanent fever. Volcanism and the runaway greenhouse effect has transformed the planet into hell. There's three to five times more CO2 in the air than in the human era. Just the formation of the massive supercontinent Pangaea led to the largest desert in history that barely sees any rain. The gigantic ocean is warm, even deep below. Two superheated currents thermal. circulate around the globe, pumping extreme amounts of heat and moisture into the atmosphere. Yeah, I guess for energy, ew, that's a harrowing image right there. Nuclear power, obviously, still going to be your best bet. Though, I don't know what this time machine runs on. But you'd still have solar and geothermal available. But yeah, this is average temperature 10 to 15 degrees Celsius higher. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. And they mentioned higher CO2. There's also less oxygen, about 15%. There's no ice, even at the poles. Seems like you're stuck in the center of the desert, isolated by endless ancient landmasses one of the most hostile environments Earth has ever produced. The deserts we know are still full of life, but not this one. Its core is starved of moisture, and the air is bone dry. The your skin dries out immediately, and your lips begin to crack. The CO2 rich air is easily 50 degrees Celsius. You didn't show up wearing any sort of PPE as part of your time machine setup, but yeah, what this would feel like would be being in an unventilated containment building, no C no SCBA, and all your HVAC system is broken. Keep in mind, there's critical HVAC systems within the uh, containment building for nuclear safety in addition to just personnel habitability safety. Yeah, this is ugly. <laughs> and sears your lungs with every labored breath. The rubber soles of your boots begin to melt. If you touch the ground, you'll get burns. Your sweat evaporates before it could cool you, and your exposed skin Ugh. begins to crack within minutes. Suddenly, it becomes even- Okay, their... Their animations are usually cartoony, goofy, but this one's trying to hit a little bit too real. ...hotter as a red sandstorm envelops the landscape. Like thousands of tiny sparks, burning hot sand hits your skin. Yeah, it's You're hurt. pressing your machine's buttons at random. It can't do time travel, but it can still move. Okay. You shoot over some of the mightiest mountains Earth has ever seen. So it can fly. Eventually, you stop at the shores of the Tethys Sea. 
The vast shallow ocean looks more like a swamp among scattered groups of waist-high ferns and spindly stems with tufted foliage. A few Lystrosaurus feeding on them eye you curiously. The water is murky and looks sickly and milky. Colorful mats of bacteria float on the surface like oil slicks. The air is hot and humid like a steam room. It's hard to breathe and your sweat can't evaporate and cool you. I mean, did you bring plenty of provisions, water, something to resist heat? You would think as part of a time machine's travel package, you would have something to survive in either extreme heat or extreme cold because you're not in sh you're not sure exactly where you're going to end up. Even the water can't give you any relief. It's as hot as a freshly run bathtub. This hot ocean can't hold much oxygen, especially in deeper layers. Bacteria and bivalves Still are the only species that thrive here. The waves move almost sluggishly through this thick bacterial soup. When they break, they leave behind a glistening iridescent film. Each wave that hits the shore releases a mist that makes your eyes and throat burn, carrying the rotten egg stench of hydrogen sulfide up from the oxygen-starved depths. Barely conscious from the heat and smell and CO2, you look at the horizon. A storm is building unlike any you've ever seen. The hot ocean feeds it endless energy, and with no continents to slow it down, it will dwarf the fiercest hurricanes of your time. You're doomed. Your broken time machine jolts and screeches. Something's happening. You're near the equator in the late Carboniferous 320 million years ago. Oh, okay, so we still traveled back. Okay, so it's malfunctioning. It's not completely dead in the water. Oh, man. Good luck getting technical support. I wonder if the time machine's reactor can run on natural uranium, because, I mean, there's... You're finding more and more of it as you go back in time, but, again, you, you'd have to mine it yourself. <laughs> Unless it has a mining facility capsule associated with it, like in Dragon Ball or something. The atmosphere is thick with moisture. The climate is locked in a never-ending wet super summer without any other seasons. Colliding continents are covered by the largest swamps the planet will ever see. A paradise for plants growing faster than their dead biomass can decompose. The I wonder, as far as calling for help in this situation, you could potentially gather radiological material, like get a cluster of the uranium-238, and since it takes so long to decay, you could arrange it in some way that geologists are going to find it in the future, and when they in, what, invent time travel, whenever this is, they can come back and help you out. Or it could even, you could even warn yourself to maybe uh, not go on this crazy adventure with an unreliable time machine. But I guess you would have already have done that if that worked. Ground beneath is a warm, soggy mass of decaying vegetation. What will be an endless desert in 70 million years is now an endless alien jungle. A huge variety of life is thriving in this period. Oh yeah, this is the area where you have way more oxygen, upwards of 35%. So, rather than the extreme overheating equivalent of a loss of coolant accident, now you're dealing with the swampier, overpressurized containment building here. More of a greenhouse. From your perspective, this is not that great. You're lost in a maze of giant tree-like plants That's towering over a twisted much, undergrowth much of giant ferns and endless varieties of bizarre and unfamiliar vegetation. The thick human- Also, if you're afraid of insects, you're probably gonna think this is worse. Mid air smells of sweet decay, but breathing makes you dizzy. Your vision seems too sharp, your thoughts slightly frantic. The dense plant cover has supercharged the atmosphere with oxygen, 60% higher than in the human era, and your body is trying to cope. Which is great for the dominant land animals, which have conquered every it niche sucks. of this majestic garden. Bugs. You're stuck in the golden age of arthropods. In this oxygen-rich world, they have evolved to sizes that will never be possible again. Yep. They are. You'd have a lot more water, though, and... You can even rely on biomass for fuel at this point, in addition to eating these insects. Innumerable and everywhere. 
armoured cat-sized megaragni crash through the undergrowth, hunting a swarm of panicked roachoids that scatter in all directions. Above you, a griffin flyer with wings spanning nearly a metre and beating like helicopter blades catches a paleodictyoptera mid-flight. Wow. You stumble through the bushes filled with countless crawling creatures as an arthropleura the length of a car picks its way through the ferns, moving countless legs in hypnotic waves. You reach a swampy clearing and stumble into the shallow water, dizzy and terrified. Uh-oh, now you're going to have to use the force to get it out of the swamp as a Pullman Scorpius rips apart its prey, eyeing you with some interest. Mm. Here in the clearing, you can see the... And I figured you would think you would have some sort of weapon ready to defend yourself, being with a time machine. But at the same time, there's that whole butterfly effect thing you gotta worry about. So yeah, not exactly a great time to be in either. Sky above the canopy glows shrieking red, intensifying at an alarming pace. The extreme humidity here creates sudden, violent thunderstorms, and the oxygen-rich atmosphere makes everything dangerously flammable. Even mm, the wet vegetation can burst into explosive flame with the slightest spark. Why do all of your trips end in a stall? Well, at least it will take all the creatures that want to eat you with it. Your broken time machine jolts back to life. The world is there folding in on itself. At least the time machine is keeping up with Earth as it travels throughout the universe. That's, that's good to know. You've woken up in the early Devonian, 400 million years ago. Most of the planet is covered... Okay, age of fish. ...in shallow seas, while the land is mostly rocky plains and mountains broken by braided rivers and mudflats. Earth is in a state of transition. Yeah, so if the first scenario... The Triassic was an emergency drill, the second scenario refueling outage. Here, this is basically a Gen Zero prototype reactor that there's not really anything there. For about 100 million years, life has begun to break down anymore. rocks into soil, a soft layer that enables plants to grow and life thrive. The ozone layer is slowly building up, fed by organisms releasing gases. Recently, this process has been speeding up. The land is turning from toxic to semi-habitable. The sky looks low, wrong somehow. The sun blazes harsh and white, barely filtered by the unfamiliar atmosphere. Mm. The air feels thin with only 15% oxygen compared to today's 21. Yeah. Each breath feels shallow and unsatisfying. You're on the verge of passing out Altitude and can only surface, move sort of. slowly. At least it's currently moderately warm and not... Have your emergency SCBA with you, you should be fine though. Stormy. Maybe not. But it's what dominates these lands that makes this world truly alien. Reaching Time up to 8 play. meters into the sky are massive obelisks of fungal prototaxites. As you walk closer, you notice spores catching the sunlight, drifting through the air like tiny stars. It's interesting you're talking about the fungi. Usually, when you hear stuff about the Devonian, it's all about fish, but starting off on land, it's your different. movement disturbs more of them, creating clouds suspended in the thin atmosphere. They coat your skin with a fine, powdery, itchy film. Mm. You try not to think about how many you're inhaling yeah, with every breath them. in this oxygen-poor air. The ground feels nothing like soil. It's mostly rock, partly covered by a thin, slightly... Sp Another reason why you need to have an SCBA in this timeline. ...bringy layer of decomposing matter. Some shallow water pools reflect the pale alien sky above. Between the fungal towers, there's a carpet of smaller fungi and a few alien-like primitive plants. No flowers, no leaves, just strange green stalks and fern-like structures that reach your ankles. Around you, the fungal towers rise like pale pillars. Their surfaces neither smooth nor rough. This one's kind of deceptively pretty. It looks good, but it, you're inhaling a bunch of bunch of fungal, and hopefully you got plenty of antifungals on you. But something in between. They're neither wet nor dry, slightly yielding under your touch. Small patches of what might be lichen create splashes of muted greens and yellows on their surfaces. The only animals you can spot are a few insects burrowing into the large mushrooms. Everything is eerily quiet. You sit down on a rock. Is this it? As the night approaches, the pale sky shifts into sickly... Your time machine broke? 
purples and grays bleeding into the darkness. One contingency you probably should have is you want to stay with your time machine because it's got all your kit and you you're, should probably remain on it or I don't know how it works if you're within a certain distance of it or if you have some if, if you're wearing some kind of device that pairs you with it but yeah you don't want it to run away without you. No animal sounds announce the coming night just the solemn whisper of the prototaxites creaking in the wind. Through the thin atmosphere, the stars and the Milky Way illuminate the scenery with unsettling clarity. The Plus fungal towers loom as pale shapes against the starlit sky, their silhouette seeming even more wrong in the darkness. You are utterly alone, a time traveler lost in an alien world. Your time machine sputters. What now? Gonna go back. Well, it looks like we made it back safely. Possibly. Maybe. Or maybe we went into an area where the Earth isn't. Thanks so much for the recommendation. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.